Nestled within the city limits of Harrisville, Pennsylvania, the Family Tradition Restaurant has been a popular eatery for over 70 years. Strange phenomena have been reported there on many occasions. It is rumored that Thelma, the mother of a former owner, still frequents the establishment, even though she has been dead for years. The current owner, Dave Carr, has experienced these happenings himself. Here is his story. I've uh, owned, my wife and I have owned a restaurant uh, for 24 years. We bought it in 1985 uh, from the previous owner who had it for 38 years. Uh, we can date the business back almost to the early 1900s without doing any research. Uh, there's been four total owners of the business uh, since its inception. Uh, and it's been a uh, landmark for travelers traveling up and down Route 8 between Pittsburgh and Harrisville for almost 100 years. I have two pictures on the, uh, on the dining room wall that were given to me by the previous owner. Uh, the one is shown in the uh, 1930s era. Uh, shows how small uh, of a building that it was and uh, what kind of accommodations it was uh, set up for at that time. And then the other picture is uh, in 1948 or 1949, shortly after uh, the previous owner bought the establishment. And, and it shows the addition of a gas station on the south side of the building, and also uh, they had added on a, a dining room. Uh, again, you know, if, if you look at the pictures, you can see if you, at the one in 1930, Rod 8 was actually a brick highway at that time, at least in the Harrisville borough. And so a lot of things have changed in this area since then. The counter area of the restaurant, the area that the customers encounter when you first come through the entry door, it's still some of the original building that was built uh, in the early 1900s. Uh, the counter has been replaced. We replaced it uh, probably 10 years after we bought the establishment. Uh, this dining room, the middle dining room, uh, was, was already here when we bought the place, but we added this room here on in 1990. Uh, it increased the seating capacity to approximately 140 people. Uh, the rest of the building uh, has been remained pretty much the same as it was when, when uh, the previous owner purchased it in 1947, with the exception we did add some uh, cooler spaces and refrigeration uh, that were not present when, uh, when we bought it. Uh, there's been some other modifications, of course, new roofs, new windows, uh, parking area has been expanded, uh, and just, you know, just a recent facelift in the front of the building, which we completed in October. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, my wife and I bought the restaurant in uh, August of 1985. And uh, things were going along pretty normal uh, for our first venture into business. And then uh, in the early spring of 1986, uh, things started to change. Uh, I walked into the area, which is our stock room, which, used to, which we found out later used to be a, a bedroom for one of the previous owner's mother-in-law. And there in the corner of the room was an elderly lady looking directly at me. Uh, she was an older lady in an older dress, gray hair, and she had a shawl over her shoulders. And uh, the whole thing, to the best of my estimation, lasted maybe three to five seconds. It seemed like an eternity, uh, and, it, and it took me back. This is our stock room. This is the area where uh, the first two sightings of Thelma happened. Uh, this is the area that I walked into in the spring of 1986 come through that door. At this time, this was just an open room. It used to be the bedroom. This is the room uh, where we believe, uh, if, if the entity is Thelma, we believe it is. And she died in this room in, like in 1957. And so we think that's, that's, that's why it's her from all accounts. She fits the description. But I walked in to get something out of the stock room and she was in this corner right over here, actually suspended in the air. and. Uh, like I said, it was a very eerie experience. Uh, I don't consider my, myself a man that uh, squeamish as easily, but it, uh, it put chills up and down my back for a few seconds. At that time, you know, I, I started to question myself whether I did actually see it, uh, if I envisioned it, if it was my mind playing tricks on me, so I just decided to keep the incident to myself. Because my wife was a little bit 
area of the dark and uh, of the ghosts and the paranormals and things like that. So I just kind of kept it to myself and didn't say anything about it. Uh, and about six months later, uh, I was on a Sunday, and one of the waitresses that was working for us came running into the kitchen area from the stockroom area, kind of frantic. And my wife was there, and she said to her, she said, Amber, what's wrong? And she said, I was just in the stockroom, and I just seen an old lady in there. And I overheard the conversation, and I looked at Amber, and I said, did she have a shawl on her shoulders? And Amber looked at me somewhat puzzled and said, yes, she did. And uh, my wife looked at both of us and said, you know, what are you talking about? And uh, at that point, it was like my sanity had been vindicated. <laughs> I felt good that someone else had substantiated what I had seen. Amber, the waitress, entered the stock room in order to get some routine items for the kitchen. Feeling as though she was being watched, she turned her head only to see an older woman wearing a shawl and looking right at her. Terrified, the waitress sprinted from the stock room into the kitchen. Uh, my name's Eric Snyder, and I paint and hang wallpaper for a living. And we were putting the wallpaper on this wall, me and a friend of mine, and uh, we were also the, the uh, uh, board that goes on the wall, the drywall below the wallpaper, and we were back in the back cutting it. And we'd been here all night, and we were making a pot of coffee. And just when the coffee was about ready, a door flew open, and we heard somebody out here just, it just sounded exactly like you were the ring of banging a spoon on the side of a coffee cup or a uh, creamer. And my friend said, she's out there and she wants coffee. And uh, it also, uh, the, the sign, flashed all night, and uh, they said they've never seen it do that again or before. After we had the experience with the cook seeing the, uh, the apparition in the walking cooler, one of my choice uh, instances was I had a cook that worked for me, his name was Jesse, and uh, he was never married and lived at home with his parents, and he was about 38 years old, but he had went to culinary school, and uh, he used to stay after work and and uh, baked the pies for me. And uh, the one morning, uh, I got off to go to work. I was working for a coal company at the time. And uh, I leave the house like a quarter to five in the morning. And I come up and the lights were still on here and the back door was open. It was in the summertime. So I stopped in to, to see what was, what was going on. Couldn't find anything out of place. So I just had shut the lights off and went to work. And when I come home that night, uh, Jesse was working that night. And he said, you know, you're going to have to get somebody else to bake pies for you at night. And I said, what happened? And he said, he'd taken the cream pies out of the oven, was waiting for them to cool, he was going to put the meringue and stuff on them. And he was sitting right over here, smoking a cigarette. He said, and that swinging door opened like somebody come through it. It was about 2 o'clock in the morning. And he said he just ran out the door, got in his car and went home. And he never baked another pie for me after that. He said, I can bake them for you in the daytime, but I'm not going to stay here at night and bake them. Probably about two years ago, I, had a, I have a friend of mine who's a retired state trooper out of the Butler Barracks. He runs cash register for me on uh, Fridays and Saturday nights. Uh, he was working, and he went into the office to uh, get some rolls of quarters and some ones, and he said he'd seen a cloud of what appeared to be like a cloud of smoke going through the office. And uh, he came back out and relayed that story to me. He said it was just kind of an eerie experience but he knows that he's seen it. And then, totally unrelated, I mean, because this isn't something you talk about all the time after you have an experience, I mean, you talk about it for, you know, a couple of days. Then one of the dishwashers that I have that is still here, uh, he was a high school student at the time, he's in college now. Uh, he went down to the basement, because that's where we keep our, our boxes of uh, syrup and stuff for our fountain pop. And uh, he went down to change one of the boxes and he said that he's seen this cloud of smoke going through the, uh, through the basement. So, I mean, he, he's a sports guy, young guy, pretty robust guy, but he was a little reluctant to go back to the basement to change pop in the dark after that because just, he just didn't feel, didn't feel safe. Uh, 
And there, there's just been numerous uh, things. You forget about a lot of them because you don't talk about it all the time. But I've had uh, other experiences myself personally. One time, this was probably uh, around 1990, uh, we was getting ready for Thanksgiving dinner, even though we were actually closed for Thanksgiving, but we would do turkey and stuffing dinners for, you know, uh, the day before Thanksgiving, the day before we closed. And we had some turkeys, in it, actually four turkeys in an oven cooking, and we got ready to close, and the turkeys still looked like they needed another couple hours to cook, so we went home, and I told my wife I was going to come back up around 11 o'clock and see if the turkeys were done, take them out of the oven. And I was, I was in the kitchen area, uh, and at that time, the previous owner, and I felt to mention this, uh, Pearl Phillips, the lady who had it for 38 years before I bought it, she stayed here because this was her home, and she had a bathroom, a bedroom, and a den back where my new kitchen area is right now. And she was back in the bedroom sleeping at that time. Well, I checked the turkeys. Uh, they were done. So I called my wife and said, I'm going to take the turkeys out of the pan and, and uh, save the broth and stuff so we can make gravy with it for tomorrow. And uh, while I was standing there, there was an entryway to our basement and the, and the door, which is gone now because you had to remove it when we put the new kitchen in. Uh, I always kept it just a, a, a padlock on it. So if somebody got into the basement with me outside, they couldn't gain entrance into the restaurant uh, without some struggle. And I was standing there, and it just sounded like somebody was in the basement stairs and kicked that door with their foot as hard as they could. And, and it's, I jumped. I knew that the noise came from the basement door, but I thought, well, maybe the, the, old, you know, the lady that owned the place before I did, maybe she fell out of bed or something. So I went into her bedroom and turned the light on, and she was laying in there sleeping, unaware of uh, what I had just experienced. So I slowly unlocked that door. I had a, had a knife in my hand, and I, I opened the door, and uh, nobody there. I went down to the basement, looked around, nothing down there, and there was a light snow in the ground. So I actually went outside to look and see if there was any footprints to get into the outside entrance to the basement, and there was nothing there. And, but it was, you know, it just sounded like somebody was trying to kick the door off the hinges. One of the other instances I, I can relate with you, uh, in our stock room, where I had seen the lady the first time. Uh, we keep a lot of things on shelves, which we have constructed since we bought the place. But uh, come in one morning and, and uh, the cook, the opening cook, had told me that uh, a gallon of barbecue sauce had fallen off the shelf and the lid come off and it was all over the stock room floor. Well, the shelves are all on the walls of the room. And in order for that, the shelves were probably like the high as the counter or maybe a little bit lower. In order for that gallon of barbecue sauce to fall off and land five feet from the counter, it wouldn't do that just by falling off the counter. Uh, in order for it to fall there and, and the lid come off, and something had to, something had to do that. Uh, and then I, I keep aluminum pans and stuff, light disposable pans for catering on, on the higher shelves and stuff. And I was in there probably six months ago. And, uh, getting a container off of one of the shelves and this whole stack of aluminum pans was, you know, way maybe a half a pound at the most, fell off the box on the top and hit me in the head. And there's no way that that thing could vibrate two feet off the top of that box without something helping it along the way. And my wife's had her own issues with, uh, with Thelma. Uh, one time she went back to the office uh, to get something out of the office, whether it was a menu for somebody or something. But she couldn't get in. And uh, she came back and hunted me up and she said, Dave, you know, something must have fallen in front of the door on the inside of the office because I can't get the door open. She said, I pushed hard and uh, it just acted like it's, it's locked or something's blocking it. And uh, I walked back the hallway and, and uh, grabbed the door handle and, and there's no locks in these doors because they're, they're old doors from the original building and it opened right up. And uh, she said, you know, it just acted like somebody was in there with their foot up against the door or something because you, you couldn't get the door open. Uh, so that was just one of her little private ones that she's had. And we've had, you know, several other instances. I think a lot of the, uh, a lot of the employees have had, you know, they've heard things, uh, you know, haven't seen things, but they've, you know, they've heard things, uh, doors closing when they, when they shouldn't close or doors, you know, finding doors open, uh, lights on, uh, lights going off and on, 
but you know, it's uh, we've just come to the understanding that whoever this is, whatever this entity is, uh, that we just coexist with it on a regular basis. I mean, there's there's been nothing sinister happening happening since we've been here. It's just you know, it's just uh, it it kind of unnerves you some uh, the supernatural or the unknown. Uh, you, you just don't know what's happening. You wish that you could put a name to it, a face to it, uh, but we can't. We, we just learned that, that it's there, uh, and when some strange things happen, we just laugh and say, you know, Thelma's up to her old tricks, and uh, we just go about conducting uh, the normal business as, as business people do, and we've just learned to live with it. The Family Traditional Restaurant is in operation 365 days a year in Harrisville, Pennsylvania. Experience it for yourself. You never know when Thelma might be around. Mm -hmm.